They spend about one-seventh of their income on food, and our current measure fails to capture the cost of basic necessities such as clothing, utilities, and shelter. What we define as poverty no longer reflects at all what it really means to be poor in this country. And using our current method of measuring poverty, we don't even consider a family of four making just $23,000 poor. There's something wrong with our formula, and a majority of Americans agree with a higher threshold. Senator, Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan famously said, you can't solve a problem until you first learn how to measure it. And we are making great progress toward moving toward the publication of a new measure of poverty that reflects the economic and social realities in this country. An accurate measurement is essential in determining how to best tackle this problem. If the moral cause of helping the poor doesn't serve as motivation enough to help struggling Americans rise out of poverty, maybe the economic argument will. Economists estimate that persistent child poverty alone costs our society an estimated five hundred billion dollars a year in lost productivity and increased spending on health care and the criminal justice system. More and more Americans are slipping through the mesh of our badly tattered safety net and we are at risk of losing an entire generation. As Congress discusses PAYGO and the deficit reduction agenda, I often hear the rhetoric that we can't drive up the deficit on the back of our children but we cannot abandon the needs of vulnerable groups with little political voice and certainly few lobbyists on K Street. Because the voices of the least among us are too often drowned out, we must take opportunities like this to draw attention to the realities facing poor Americans. Awareness is a critical step in finding solutions to improve the well-being of those living in poverty so let us affirm the recognition of January as Poverty in America Awareness Month. I reserve the balance of my time.